Yo, what's going on, guys? We're going to be playing one of the most balanced champions in all League of Legends and arguably the best soloist, excluding Nasus, and that is Jax in the top lane. We have Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Tenacity, Last Stand, Cosmic with Biscuits, alongside Attack Speed, AD, and Armor. For our first item, we're going to be rushing down Trinity Force. It's slightly better than Divine. Unless you're playing against a big HP tank top lane, then you're going to want to go Divine instead. It's going to be Trinity into Shoujin into Zhonya's. This is a 68% win rate Jax build. Uh, if you don't plan on really team fighting, then Zhonya's is a little bit low value. But if you're going to team fight, Zhonya's is your best third item. If you don't want to team fight third item, typically you'll just push Black Cleaver, Frozen Heart, or Ravenous Hydra. Ravenous Hydra is a very good Jack split push item. We took Ignite TP just to be super aggressive. I want to get my passive stacking against Kled, hit level 2 before him. Every stack gives us attack speed. Now when he steps up, we can look to take a big fight with him. That's pretty good, all in all. I'm all stacked up, so we should win this. All right, we got his flash for my ignite. Ignite's a much shorter cooldown than flash, obviously. He's also going to miss some minions. We're going to get a point in our Q. So we can get to this guy. Kind of want to keep him off the minions. So we already did get his flash. So at this point, we should go look for a ward. on fiddle jungle. Ah. Uh, we could get one right here. This is going to be a good spot. We'll know exactly when he's taking it. We shouldn't really even miss a minion for this either. We also have Biscuit. You don't want to use your Biscuits when you're full health, full mana. You want to wait till you're well below half on both. We still get XP from that minion, so we're chilling. We get him with the stun. His wave's definitely pushing to me. Auto W. We'll pop Biscuit. Q auto. All right, so we have his Ignite. His wave's coming to us. We don't have to fight him right now. We're going to miss a minimal amount of gold and XP. We'll have a pretty big item advantage coming on back to wave. We'll go ahead and just grab Longsword, no potions. We could have gone for refill, but then we wouldn't be able to get anything else because we had an awkward amount of gold. Now that I have the wave basically in a freeze, he's going to have to stay. He has more minions than I have. And he sees mashing down my minions, so I need to mash down his and match his push that he's doing. Q, auto, and the W. We get him to jump away. Now he's in a rough spot. That's all because we had teleport. With his ignite, he kind of won that short-term encounter. But now I'm winning the long-term encounter. And he's going to kind of have to play at... The way I want to play. Mm, this freeze might not hold. Because he has a very small minion advantage over me. It depends on if my minions focus these range creeps or not. I can't even see the minion HP there. That minion HP bar was just full on blocking. I'm not sure where this guy went. He might be roaming because I have a perma freeze or a semi perma on him right now. And my wave's actually going to hard push to him. Early reinforcement point. We needed him to have four more minis than us. I killed a few too many. But at the very least, we did control the tempo a little bit. Got it. Got it. He missed cannon. That's good. I have way more minions. And plus I have early reinforcement points. So yeah, my wave's going to keep coming to him. All right, auto W. I still have my stun. I didn't want to use it because I knew he was just going to dash away. Your stun doesn't cancel dashes. That's solid. I'll take that trade. I have minion advantage, so it's going to be hard for him to follow that up. Auto Q reset. We get it. We can just reset. We've already crashed the wave. It's going to come back to us. We're also sitting on unspent gold. Sheen's really, 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 really good. We get all of our health and mana back. And we'll buy one controller just in case we need a ward to jump to. Or if I'm shoved up and want to lay it. So you see as minions are in kill formation, they're tight, they're hitting. My miner streaming in. This was going to come to me whether or not he was last hitting or not. 
We have an HP advantage, mana advantage, item advantage. This is all based off of one TP. You can build up the uh, gold spent advantage and health mana off that alone. He's like knights probably up, but my ignites up. I'm just gonna walk up, try to bait him into autoing us. We was smart not to. Let's get our passive going here. That's annoying. He's not really, really like fighting us that directly. All right, we're chilling. Yeah, he's taking turret shots too. He had so many minions that made that fight bad for us. He's wanting to stay to get the kill. He really shouldn't though. We need to just play that slower. We almost died for it. His little uh, thing that he throws out does so much damage. I need his minions to kill my minion there. His little chain that he throws out. Absolutely chunks. And then he stopped. He didn't finish the range minion. What a joke. The wave would have been somewhat in freeze, but since his minion randomly swapped aggro at the end instead of killing my ranged minion, now basically what's going to happen is I have a, f well, I had a full range minion advantage and it could attack from backline with no health and still do full damage output. My wave's definitely coming to him here. RTP's coming up. We can take a big heavy trade with him. Kled's not an easy matchup to kill really for any champion. We obviously outscale him though. Kled is completely centered around the early game. Auto W. We win this auto W. I have my lethal temple full stacked. You're dead. We're gonna Q, auto W. Down he goes. We got his flash there as well. His wave is still coming to me, so I could even reset here and walk back. In fact, I'll grab Lucid so I can get back to lane really quick. And we'll leave. So yeah, his wave is coming to me. Maybe I should have thinned it out a little bit. If I killed one minion or two, it would have slowed it down to where... Ah, uh, okay. It, it, it's a tough call because if I kill one, two, or three, then it kind of messes it up. But I think this is fine. Since it's on cannon wave, him having five more minions is fine. Not only if it's just a normal wave, first normal wave, you only want the enemies to have four more minions than you have. So yeah, that actually turned out perfectly. Cool. Very close to turret though. He doesn't have flash. I'm building up my passive right now. Auto W. E and R. Auto. Auto W. Yeah, he's screwed. Down he goes. We just jumped to him. We had ward spam to use. Now we want to crash the wave because we want to get turret plates. Since he's going to be dead for a while. The higher level somebody is, the longer their respawn takes. We're, we've been patient. There I had my passive stacked up a little bit. I think his main, his Q hook was on cooldown. We take the fight, win it easy. I'll max E second. E max first or second is totally fine versus auto attack based top laners like Trindamir, Irelia, Kled. We want to get our passive stacked as much as possible before going in on a fight. Or uh, if we're going to take a short trade, just make sure our E's up. So we can just walk in auto W, have our E spinning. Cool. We can TP back to wave. I I'd like to trade with him a little bit heavy here. Because I don't know where Fiddle is. Resetting might be what's best. Eh, you know, I'll fight him. My R's about to be up. Let's get our passive stacked. Dodged. Q auto W. He jumps away. He's going to have to hook for that minion. Good. Now that that's on cooldown, he's going to end up missing cannon probably. auto W he jumps away again that's a very short cooldown jump my passive is heavily stacked my R autos in there it is it's double auto and a jump on him auto W couldn't quite get off the W because he's just jump spamming 
The jump's a lot lower cooldown than I even realized. Auto W. Probably walk him down here. Oh, wow. Hmm. I think I'm dead. I need mana for my jump. Oh, wow. Yeah, Little Clyde actually moves really fast into champions. He gets a big speed up. So now he's almost able to catch up with no boots there. Little Kled moves faster towards champs than even Mounted Kled does. Fun fact of the day. He's really slow if he's not moving towards enemy champs. We'll grab this. We'll grab this. There's nowhere good for me to really TP to. Hey, friend. I'll be taking this. Kled's low. He can't fight this. I have a big gold spent advantage. The only champion who can match Jack's split push is Nasus. He's the only champion in the game because of his wither spam. A while back, I think it was at the start of this season or last season, they made his wither ridiculously overtuned. He can perma spam it on you once he has some ability haste. You only have a few seconds between not being withered. So as long as you ban Nasus, there's not a single champion you can't go toe to toe with in the split push mid late game. It's just how it is with Jax. Alright. You auto W. That really, really hurt. I don't think I can stay safely. That champ's got some wild damage. His Q hook, if that hits you, oh my goodness. There's Trinity, baby. Jax is getting a visual rework. I don't think they're changing any of his abilities, but we're looking to sell some more skins on him. He's a somewhat simplistic, easy champion. The main mistake people make on him is fighting when his abilities are on cooldown. If you go in with his abilities off cool, with his abilities like ready to use, it's not that hard to win trades. Just walk up, use, use your E right as they're trying to hit you with their auto. You don't use it before they start their auto though, because your E does more damage the more autos you block. I need to get this double stacked. There's my one, two. Got his flash. He's about to get on his horse is the thing. I need to lay this so I can get some plates. He gets back on horse from killing minions. It's tough. Auto W. So we take two turret shots, we get him off his horse. I think we could possibly kill him now. Walk him down underneath turret with my passive full stack and with my empowered auto from R ready. Then we can get it up off turret. Auto W. Just jump out off onto a ward and we're fine. Fiddle's bot side. This Kled's doomed. We take everything, baby. Everything. We see where everybody is right now. They don't have a Jinx rocket, so we're fine. I'll take this too, because it'll went drag. Auto W. Very nice. It all belongs to me. You know, I don't really want to team fight this game with the Thresh Blade, Thresh Hook, Thresh R. Swain might get us both killed here. Oh, He's going to get us both killed. <laughs> I don't know if he was trying to save me or if he misclicked with that auto. He's so low on health. Thresh showed up to back up the Samira. Now it's time for Spear of Shojin, then we'll go for Ravenous, because I don't want a team fight with Zhonyas. My little friend. Oh, Thresh is here. That makes me nervous. I don't like to see Thresher. There's no objective really coming up, so... Oops, I just burned R. I have a hotkey for when I play Kel to R myself instantly. And I just 
pressed that, so it activated my R. The R is basically an auto reset on Jax, a big chunk of damage, and fits enemy champions. You get loads of armor and magic resist. His wave's still coming to me. This is a freeze, technically. He's not even getting XP because he's not close enough to where these minions are dying. He has 5 minion advantage, that's fine. You mainly want to be 4, but these are missing a lot of health. Boop. He's, he's not getting gold or XP right now. Then I can show up to drag fight and crush his team. Is Fiddle going to press R there? These four minions, they're all kind of low. And it's also on my cannon wave, so my cannon's shredding. He's trying to bait me into the fiddle R. I already saw fiddle there. Leona really shouldn't be here though. It's just there's no value in it because then they, they just hold their guys here. My fiddle R is gonna hurt. Yeah, I kind of felt that coming. That's kind of my fault. I got to get out of here. They should have never split. The only thing that was keeping him alive was Fiddle's fear threat. But Fiddle wasn't in range to fear. We need to get Ravenous ASAP. Ravenous is going to be so important. Okay, cool. Maokai actually soloed him there. It's going to be hard for Fiddle to drain. Maokai is going to perma-cancel it with his Q-Knock. Snares don't cancel Fiddle Drain or Fiddle R. Has to be a stun. And basically a non-snare, non-slow hard CC. Alrighty, let's grab Control Ward. Ooh, we have two. We, didn't, we don't need two Control Wards. Yeah, next up is Ravenous. Like I said, if you wanted the team fight, third item will always be Frozen or Zhonya's or Cleaver. Typically what's going to be, or even Sterix. Sterix is good too for team fighting, third item on Jax. But if you want split push, third is typically going to be Holebreaker or Ravenous. And Ravenous is going to be way better for us. Holebreaker does give you extra health regeneration for the sustain, but outside of that, I mean, it's not quite enough for what we're doing because we're, we're scrapping pretty hard. I'll be taking this. His blue buff is down. Thresh is probably about to walk into me. Get the stun, auto W. Yeah, you're both in trouble. Oh, Thresh took it. That was close. I could have potentially jumped out. I thought I could kill Samara. I'm glad that my shutdown gold went to Thresh and not somebody else to where it's kind of just buried on him. Look at the Thresh damage though. Seriously, tell me this champion isn't broken. In all of that commotion, he did more than Fiddle and Samira. Almost more than both of them combined. Thresh base damage is a little outrageous, not gonna lie. It's for support that doesn't build any damage items. I wouldn't really even count his play as a skill shot. It's impossible to miss it at close range. Mm, let's get Rav. Back to, oh. I guess I could, could have TP'd if there was a ward here. I don't think I need to TP. The enemies are already gonna have to reset. This, this fight's one. Low, low, low. Samir, I think she can't go in with her teammates already dead, right? Yeah, nice try. I'll take turret. Auto W. Very nice. Mm, not quite. You're dead. Auto W. 
Ba. Hold on, my abilities there. Who's alive, this club? Auto W. Get the stun. Auto R. Got it. Got it. All right, we're chilling. Whew. Boy, oh boy. Cled's damage is so freaking high. He falls off of it. You have to keep reminding yourself of that whenever you play against him because it's easy to get downtrodden on yourself. Almost dying to him <laughs> when he's so far behind. Just remember, he doesn't scale. I'll push this real quick, even without Ravenous. I see where their whole team is. Got it. Auto and a W reset. Big fight mid. I'll pop a TP. We'll end the game right here. Almost made it to basically full build. Or full core build. Goodbye, Anivia. Aw, oh, they killed her without me. <laughs> Once we get in here, Baron's completely free. They're going to be perma-stuck in base. Taking Ignite TP is definitely... Like, there's a certain level of risk to it if the enemy jungler perma camps you. But at the same time, there's no better laning summoner spells to take, really, than Ignite TP. Because the TP, you get full lane tempo. With, you'll have more HP, more mana than your opponent by default. And more tempo if they don't have TP, right? You get to spend your gold and whatnot. And then the Ignite, if they have Ignite, I mean, you can match their damage output. So, it's kind of like a cheese you get to run. I'm jumping away from that. I don't mind blowing a control ward because just in case he's gonna flash on my head. It's not worth me dying. Auto W. He's stunned out. Hit him both with an R. He's ignited. Auto W. Jump to the minion. The stun down. Bonk. And we're going, boys. We're going. Oh, she should have gone for Samira. I guess she was worried Samira was going to win wall her sword there. Auto W, get the stun. Auto W. Samira is chilling. Yeah, you can't auto me though, buddy. <laughs> That's GG's. I'm not a huge fan of Holdbreaker on Jackson. In theory, it should be really strong, but it never really ends up being that good on him. Because you can't team fight very well with it. Whenever you have a teammate remotely close to you, you lose all of your armor and magic resist from it. Let's get the charts. I'm interested to see if we have the most. Looking at damage level 10 champions, we did have the most in the game. Swain at number two and um, Samira at number three. Damage taken, we were up there, not the most. Self mitigated, we were up there, not the most. And for runes, high value. All in all, Jack's top lane, in my opinion, is generally the best carry top laner in the game if not one one of the best if not the best carry champion in the game since you can auto attack block it doesn't matter how fed 80 carries get and in general the strongest champions in the game are auto attack based i mean look at someone like a trindamir or a master yi or an irelia or like i said 80 carries your e completely screws them hard and Jax gets tanky enough through his items to where mages can't one shot you assassins can't one shot you and then you can rip them apart if you guys enjoyed this Jax video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps out immensely. My name is King Sticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.